Saving the world gets old, man. There are only so many gigantic tutu-wearing space bananas one can stand before just going berserk, throwing the country A through K rack out on the street and going to work at a virgin megastore and never looking back. Eventually, peace must reign, else those who fought for it were just wasting their time. But even in times of peace, trouble lurks in the most benign of places, like a little kid who's lost and needs an escort home. So we turn to Robert, twice hero of the Jumping Flash series, who's now just picking up odd jobs in the service of the Universal City Hall. He's here too? Well, to do pretty much anything that needs doing, as that Baron Aloha jerk's taking a powder and he'd be kind of bored otherwise. Behold, Robert Mon... Ja? I realize that French and Japanese don't really scan very well against each other and that I've been called out for my own pronunciation issues, but come on! We return to the high-flying 3D platforming gameplay that typifies the Jumping Flash series but with an entirely new modus operandi. More specialized, mission-based challenges as opposed to the standardized collect four things and split goal of the previous two games. It might be busting ghosts or delivering a time-sensitive package or scouting locations for a hot spring. Surface makes up the action a bit, which I'm on board with, but at the cost of the kind of intensity that really made the original sing. It's largely up to you to determine whether you prefer this more laid-back style of gameplay, but I personally feel it's ever so slightly off the mark. Not at all bad, mind you, just a little too far removed from the groundbreaking jump-and-gun craziness of the previous two games in the series. Sure, there's still jumping and there's still gunning, but it all comes in much smaller doses, all the better to reuse one particular area over and over again for different missions. In other words, the Super Mario 64 effect. But in an attempt to make up for it, you've got some brand new challenges that aren't at all about helping people. They're about putting your rubbit piloting skills to the test and, frankly, showing off. Now this I can get behind. Bouncing around in a high-risk environment, racing a clock... Wait a sec, I've been here before? It's Pilot Wings! They've tried to turn Jumping Flash into the PlayStation's answer to Pilot Wings. Tumbling through rings during a free fall, bouncing from platform to platform, supported by a pretty awesome soundtrack, and a blind taste test. Well, you wouldn't be able to tell because these are video games, so you can't really play them blindfolded. But it's just the kind of goofy, arcadish 3D piloting that kept me glued to my N64 back in the day, just now on a PlayStation. But unfortunately, the Jumping Flash series didn't catch on here in the States as it might have, so this version was on thin ice from the jump. Add to that an extensive vocal performance, which would have required a heck of a lot of redubbing and a hardcore translation effort, and, well, you can see why Sony didn't bother. For those brave souls considering importing this one, I'd say don't hold back, especially if you're a fan of the first two Jumping Flash titles. The gameplay is pretty straightforward, even if, like me, you were too busy trying to get a new battery in your pocket station and missed some of the exposition. So if you've seriously got a thing for robotic, rabbit, peacekeeping, escort, ghost-busting, um... Things. Man, that's a lot of hats. Look into Robert Monja and groan at the pronunciation on your own time. I'm sure Felicity in Worcestershire certainly did, as she's so much closer to France than us here on the Intergalactic Underwater City Arcade Hall. Science.